Hello, my fellow life forms, and welcome to Phantom Universe. Here we go. What's good, everybody? What's up? We got a lot to do today. This should be a pretty decent size video today. We're going to be talking about a bunch of sacred geom geometry stuff. We're going to be going what I do now. I'm relatively new to the subject, not going to lie. There are some people out there that know way more than I do. So I'm going to be posting a link here in a second once we get some more people in here on uh, a YouTube channel that I've actually been watching recently called Sacred Geometry Decoded. Super good stuff. Now, the dude is a critic when it comes to advanced ancient machinery and stuff like that. And he's got some really good alternative perspectives and experiments that he's done himself on making and replicating what we find in Egypt. And it's super cool stuff. Highly recommend going to look into that. But we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff. So, I see here in the comments right now, Josh Hillis, he says, I saw, I saw a new article today that says it proves the younger Dryas, that's with an A, bro, not a U, D-R-Y-A-S, get it right, was not caused by a cosmic event, but by a volcanic event. I would still think it's possible that an impact could trigger an eruption. I am glad you brought this up, because I saw the same article. Yes, there is a lake, I forget what it was called, but there's a cave near this lake to where they found evidence of volcanic activity around the same time period as the Younger Dryas. Now, um, prehistory decoded, I want to say I need to go back and find it, but uh, there's a YouTube channel, I'm pretty sure it's prehistory decoded, to where he actually goes over the scientific papers of those finds and the data, and he has he's been doing Younger Dryas research for a long time now on his own time and he's an actual like doctor he's got some kind of you know credibility i guess you could say towards the subject but uh yes there was volcanic activity taking place at that time but like you said it is likely that a cosmic impact could have absolutely caused enough tectonic shift and earthquakes to make volcanic activity happen basically okay super scientific way of saying that right so, super cool stuff, though. Highly recommend, highly recommend looking at that. Pretty sure it's sac uh, prehistory decoded. Actually, let me, let me confirm that for you real quick. Decoded. Prehistory decoded. Yes. Yes, that's it. Actually, let me, let me post this link for you guys in the comment section so you guys can take a look at that. Prehistory decoded, and here is sacred geometry decoded. I'm going to put this down in here for you as well, and I'll put both of those links in the description when the uh, when the live stream is over. All right, so we've got 18 people in here so far. Let's uh, we're going to wait a little bit. Let's go till around like 8:10 before we get started with the main main subject. I'm just going to keep talking with you guys until we get a decent crowd in here, and then we are going to start start the good stuff so what's up everybody let's see we got uh 1n20 dnd &D. what's up my fellow life form how's it going rob long how's it going my dude just in time rob weeks welcome welcome up downfall 1984 what's up bro how you doing josh hillis oops yeah you yeah oops yourself mm -hmm. good stuff uh rio mark Marcantonio. Marcantonio, what's good, bro? Love your TikTok. Thank you. Thank you very much. So apparently, the ruling for TikTok is going to happen tonight. That's going to be interesting. Now, I think, guys, if it doesn't get banned, I might jump back on. I'm not going to lie. Kind of been missing it. You know, it's, it feels weird, you know, not being on there. I was on it for so long, making so many videos. And honestly, the TikTok videos are way easier to make than YouTube videos. So we'll see where that goes. Rio, Rio again, you got it. Yeah, my dude. So what we're going to be doing tonight. All right. So like I said earlier, I got a few things I want to talk about beforehand, but then I'm going to be uh, cutting my video stuff for a second and i'm going to move my webcam over webcam over here 
to where we are going to start drawing, uh, we're going to draw the seed of life, the flower of life, which you see right here. This is the flower of life, and this is seen throughout the planet and like through all spectrum spectrums of time. This this thing right here has been around for a long time. Uh, and from the seed of life, we're going to draw the platonic solids. Um, there's five of them. We're only going to be drawing four of them because the fifth one is way too complicated and we're already going to be kind of, you know, going a little bit late tonight anyway. And then after all that, I'm going to show you guys how to make a 3D model of the Great Pyramid in all of its glory. Look at that. It's going to be super dope. It's going to be super cool. I'm super excited. I've been actually uh, working literally not all day, but for a few hours up until this point, drawing all this stuff out for you guys to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing and, you know, doing all the research I need to do for what we're going to be talking about first. Let me come back down here in the comment section. I see you guys coming on in here. I've got 26 people in here. What's up, everybody? Hello, my fellow life forms. Um, Jonathan Tr uh, Trotch, Tr Trotch, Wal Jonathan, I'm going to call, just call you Jonathan. <laughs> What is your thought on the mud flood theory? The mud flood theory. Um, I think I know what you're referring to. I don't know a whole lot about it. I watched a few things a while ago, but it was this, this idea that a whole lot of places, and I forget exactly where, so forgive me. I think it was somewhere in Europe. I think so. I'm not positive. But anyway, it's this idea that all of the like more older buildings, not super, super old, but like, old buildings were completely not completely buried but like this m flood came through of this like really thick mud and like buried a portion of the foundations of these buildings and so what do they do they just built the built they just like said forget about all that and then just continued building the building so if you dig down you can see like the more building that used to be there that just has kind of been erased almost you couldn't tell it was really there there's a few like windows and stuff you can see that um that would suggest so so it's really weird stuff i don't know a whole lot about it so forgive me on that but yeah i think i know what you're talking about rob weeks we super miss you on tiktok so i hope you come back oh well thank you guys thank you guys uh the last stream i saw you told me you got uh this is josh hillis again the last stream I saw you told me you got a lot of your info from Randall Carlson. And since I have watched about 20 hours of his stuff, well, that's not enough. There's like several hundred hours of his stuff out on the internet and I have watched a lot of it. Yes, Randall Carlson is amazing. Like, man, to meet that dude would just be the coolest thing. To like go on like a trip out west, like see all of the you know, the the formations out in, you know, the, the northern United States out in Washington State, oh, that would be, that would just be amazing. It would be so freaking cool. Definitely agree with that. 20 pay, 28 people in here still. All right. Um, Jonathan, Jonathan again, Trokowski, Elo, Trokowski. Okay, got you, bro. You're Russian? Wow, Russia. Russia-ish. Oh, never mind. I don't know what you are. I've never met you before. All right, we got two minutes and then we're going to get started. Two minutes. So I've been really busy with work. Like, like I said, I've been working like overtime a lot lately. So I've been, it's been rough. Let's just put it that way. So trying to find time to like putting out my last video was really just like thrown together about the uh, sarcophagi, the 27 sarcophagi in Egypt. That is super cool. I can't wait to see more information about that kind of stuff when it finally comes out and everything that they found down there. What if they found something and they don't tell us about it though? What are you going to do about it? I don't know. I know we got a, you know, um, Bright Insight actually did a video when they found the granite, the black granite box sarcophagi under Alexandria. I highly recommend looking at his video on that. And he made a really good point. They should live stream when they open these things. Why would they not? Like, everybody should be able to see this when it happens. Why do we get to only see it in the aftermath, right? You know, who, what was actually there before? Now, you know, with the sarcophagi they found in Alexandria, which is weird, I actually need to do a video about that as well because it was some weird stuff, like massive granite box with three bodies in it, two dudes and a female. It was some crazy stuff, some crazy stuff. 
Um, Mike, Mikey, Sphinx video is good. Red pill for normies. Most definitely. Excuse me. Burping over here. Yeah, definitely. And there's a lot of critics out there that say it's not water erosion. But when you look at all the other stone and like quarries that were supposedly happening at the exact same time that the Sphinx was supposedly created, it doesn't have any type of erosion like that on it at all. Especially to that degree. Everything, all of the stuff we can really see from the dynastic Egyptians is all from sand and wind erosion. We don't, we don't find this pillowy looking stonework, you know, stone erosion in Egypt. And it's just like, ugh. But definitely love the Sphinx, topic of the Sphinx, one of those big things. And the thing is with the Sphinx is like when, when um, John Anthony West and Robert Schock first proposed the idea of it being older, the academics just, you know, went, went nuts over it. They, uh, they're like, this is not possible. There's no physical possible way anybody that long ago could have carved such a gigantic structure. Then they've, in 1994, they found Gobekli Tepe which obviously dates back to around 11,000 years ago, I think was the correct date, um, proving that people were absolutely able to do megalithic work super, super long ago. So it kind of just gives more validation to the idea that the Sphinx could possibly be way older. And Turkey isn't very far away from Egypt. You could totally, within a lifetime, less than a lifetime, walk to Turkey from Egypt. Yeah, it's pretty dope. All right, it is 8-11. So let's get started, guys. So... Like I said, I am still relatively new to understanding sacred geometry, and there is a whole lot to it, and I am not super, super good at math. So it's complicated. With pi, phi, the, the golden ratio, well, that is phi, measurements and all this kind of stuff, but I always loved the way it looked. That just looks super cool. So let's go ahead and get on into this now. We are going to start with the Osiri Osirion, okay? This is in Egypt. Um, crap, I totally should have looked up exactly where this was in Egypt beforehand. But this is in Egypt, all right? This is a super old temple, the Osirion. And you can see these massive, huge columns. And these things weigh up to several tons. I think the largest one is like 60, maybe even 80 tons. I'm not positive off that off the top of my head right now. But the problem is with this place is that it's below the water table. So it fills up with water. They have to continuously be pumping water out of it. Here I have a better picture of it filled with water. Look at that. What, what a disaster. You know, you can't, you can't put tourists in there. It's not, it's not right. But do you notice anything? Let me get a little closer for you. Hold on. All right, do you see anything now? No? How about now? Ooh, you see that right there? That right there, it, I can't really point at it for you, but you can see two flowers of life right there okay let me get a better picture of it here for you this is one of the oldest temples supposedly in egypt i forget the exact date i totally should have looked at gotten that information beforehand but i threw all this together really quick not too long ago but we have two flowers of life right here in the osirion temple super cool okay here is another flower of life from somewhere in india super old again and here are a whole bunch of pictures, okay? So number, image number one over here at the top left, that's from Israel. Number two right there in the middle top is from China. Number three is from Turkey. Number four is from Egypt. Number five is from India. Number six is from Germany. Number seven is from Belgeria. Number eight is from Sweden. Number nine is from France. Number 10 is from uh, Schitz in Central Europe. And number 11 is from Greece, and 12 is one of them, and there's, they're, they're everywhere. They're, we could keep going on this list. But this type of knowledge of sacred geometry is all over the place. It's everywhere. Everybody was doing it because it contains a remarkable amount of knowledge in such a simplistic, well, <laughs> simplistic, in such a beautiful way. And uh, so... What is it all about? What is sacred geometry? Well, I don't really know that off the top of my head either right now, okay? I don't know exactly what it is, but from the way we use the compass and the square and the way we form these shapes and circles and patterns, we find these types of patterns deep within the very structure of literal existence. Like, you know, for example, the golden ratio. That's also sacred geometry. And we find the golden ratio, I don't have a picture of it, I'm sorry. 
we find the golden ratio within everything. It's within, you know, uh, sunflowers, it's within pine cones, it's within any type of plant that, you know, grows like with its leaves. It's in everything. We find it in galaxies. We find it within the human body itself. And um, Da Vinci actually has it within the Vitruvian man. Now, I don't have a decent picture of it here, but there's, you can see, there's a sacred geometry thing that you can see on this. And here's another recreation of it showing you how complicated it gets, okay? Super complicated. And the Vitruvian man is the ideal shape and dimensions and proportions of the human male figure. And there's another female version of it, but we're not gonna get into that today. So Da Vinci was doing this, a whole bunch of Greek people were doing this. Obviously the Egyptians were doing it. At literally everybody on the planet was doing it. So it's, it's amazing. Now, another interesting thing, and you don't really see this a whole lot, but it's also deep within Christianity. Look at this. Here we have a painting of Jesus, and what's he holding? Look at that. That is a compass right there. He is creating existence using sacred geometry. Let's go to another one here. Here we have God himself. What's he holding? Look at that. The compass. Isn't that just crazy? Let's go to Asia. Here we go. Here we have the woman. I don't know the names of these characters, I'm sorry. But we have the woman holding the compass and the male holding the square. So, and there's, there's other remarkable paintings showing this kind of stuff everywhere. And I highly recommend looking into it yourself. But sacred geometry is literally everything. I guess that's what you could say. Sacred geometry is everything. So, what, was, what did I have this one? What was this one? Okay, yes, that's right. So the Parthenon, look at this. This is the golden ratio and how they built that structure using this type of geometry. And I still am trying to figure out exactly how the golden ratio works, but apparently it's like you take, you know, one plus one equals two, and then two plus one equals three, and then three plus two equals five, and then five plus three equals so on and so forth. And so you've, and that is the golden ratio. It, it, it's this continuous infinite expansion of numbers essentially and it's represented in these squares like you see the big square is a representation of the second square and the third square and it keeps going down infinitely basically this is my basic general understanding of it so super cool stuff so let's go and get into the drawing part of this now guys so for here i'm going to bring away my visuals right now and move my webcam over here so that we can start drawing this stuff so i will be right back guys All right, boom, here we go. This is what I've been doing all day. Let me go and adjust this a little bit more. All right, so if you guys are gonna follow along, this is what you're gonna need. You don't need the scissors right now, take those away. But we're gonna need some kind of drawing utensil, free, and then we're gonna need a compass, and you're gonna need a ruler. Now I have a long ruler, and also this little ruler, it's just more convenient, but it really does, you don't have to have two rulers. So this is what we're gonna be doing first, okay? We're obviously gonna start with a circle. It's super basic, super simple, okay? From that circle, we're going to create the seed of life, like so, and then after that, we're going to create the flower of life, right? So let me go and get a fresh piece of paper out now and get started on this. Let me do that. Let's do it out here. Hold on one second. All right, hopefully, I've been trying to, I've been practicing this for like, you should see the amount of paper I have wasted trying to do all this. I'm gonna just move these dudes out of the way. Put holes in those. Because a compass will put holes in your paper. It's just how it works. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to split page in half using my ruler. And I'm just going to be using my uh, my uh, mechanical pencil here. I'm going to be using mostly 
pen for you guys because it's way easier to see on the webcam. All right, so take your compass. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up your compass the, the best way, okay? Because if you do it wrong, it makes it difficult. So this is the one I have. I don't know exactly what you have, so you just have to work with it. What you wanna do is if you have a pencil or anything, you wanna close the compass completely, all right? And you're gonna take your pen, that's too, too closed. I'm gonna stick this dude in here and we're gonna line it up as close as we can with the tip, all right? Let me close that down a little bit, make it easy. And get that as close as you can to where it's level with the point, the needle on your compass. So I'm gonna put that dude about right there. Very good. Now we have our compass ready, here we go. So I'm gonna make this about an inch. Now let's go a little larger than that. So about an inch and a half. That'll be my radius. And we are going to draw our first circle and put it right here towards the top of my page and draw the first circle. Congratulations, guys. You have just done sacred geometry. We're done. All right, live stream over. No, I'm kidding. All right, hopefully my big hand will get in the way when I do. So from here, we're now going to draw the Visica Pisces, which is circle overlapping another circle. So you're gonna take your needle but right here where that circle intersects that line we drew at the beginning here we're going to draw another circle and this is our visica pisces this is the fundamental beginning of sacred geometry right here and from here we will then draw the seed of life and how we're going to do that and pull this down some where these two circles intersect we're going to put our needle right there and be as accurate as you can with this because it's going to help you in the long run and we're going to draw another circle Okay, and then where these two circles intersect right there, we're gonna do the same thing again. And we're just gonna keep repeating this until we our first circle has six circles surrounding it. So, three, whoops. Yep, it's easy to screw up. Trust me, I've been screwing up all freaking day. Four, five, and then last circle is six. And this is the seed of life. There you go. And just to finish it off, you wanna take the center to the outer edge of the furthest circle to encase it in a circle. So, and that's to finish it. Ta-da! We have just drawn the seed of life. Now, from the seed of life, we are now going to draw the flower of life. One has a lot more circles involved. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna take the original diameter of this first one. So I'm gonna come back over here, line this dude back up. That circle. So now the best way to draw this is we're gonna just draw the Visica Pisces, and then three more circles after that. It's gonna just be like an extended Visica Pisces, basically. Start up here at the top, draw the first circle, draw the second circle, and we're just gonna do four more, or excuse me, three more. Oh. have a line of five circles. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're basically gonna do the same thing, but where these circles intersect here, we're gonna draw four circles on either side. That dude there. And the more accurate you are on placing your needle, the better it's gonna look. Come on now. Two, three, and four. I'm gonna go back over this one. All right, so now we're gonna do it on the other side. By the way, I can't see the chat. I'm focusing too hard, so if you're talking to me, I can't. 
I'll come back to the chat when we're done. There. So now, if you notice, we are creating three seeds of life. Can you see, start to see that forming in the center? Now, very good. So now we have five circles, four circles on the other side of that. Now we're going to do three more on the edge of these guys where these intersect. There. I totally kind of got that one off a little bit, but hey, what are you going to do about it? Two. Three. The other side. One. Two. And three. Now to top it off, we're going to enclose it all. We're not quite done yet. So notice how it's made this hexagon shape. Okay, you want to find the center to the edge of the outer, like the furthest point to do the encasing circle. So I'm gonna I got this dial, this dial on my dudes for like precision stuff. If you don't have one of those, I don't know what to tell you. You just gotta get it right. So we dial this out to the edge. That circle there. And encase it. So now you can see where I'm off a little bit. You know, it's not touching perfect up here. But hey, what are you gonna do about it? So now we're not done yet. We have to finish the the petals in this outside portion. So where the circles intersect out here now, we're gonna do the same thing. And when we create a petal at the center of these outside circles, we're gonna to go to the point where those pe petals intersect, continue it. So I'm gonna start down here. Oh, wait a minute, oops, almost screwed up. You gotta find the original diameter. So we're gonna come back here to the first circle. This dude back in there and dial this dude back down. That original diameter, there we go. We're gonna put this dude here where this intersects. And I'm not gonna go all the way out out of the circles like here here you go let me show you so i'm going to stop short right there where that intersects right there i'm not going to go past that over here dang i'm just going to keep repeating this that wasn't very accurate you can see this pedal here we're going to go to the tip of that dude and then finish these two petals in that circle. That is super off. Petals there. Cut. And we're just going to keep repeating that until we have filled. Everything. Big hands are getting in the way. This one. I'm trying to focus, and I'm very talkative. I'm sorry. I can't tell you how many times I screwed this up trying to get this right earlier today. Like accidentally, like. Fumbling my freaking compass. Tell me. This is not perfect. You guys get the idea. Whoops, see, just like that. Lost it. They're probably like put on like some like royal royalty free music or something. But I'm not gonna stop. Almost there. And boosh. There. It's flower of life. So I'm going to do one more circle. You always see another circle out here. Just 
pick a spot, doesn't matter where. Do one more circle to enclose all of that. There we go. That is how you draw the seed of life and the flower of life. All right, so now from the seed of life, we can create the platonic solids. And that's what we're gonna do next. Let me pull this dude, my platonic solids, and this is how we're gonna do this. We create the solids from the inside geometry of the seed of life. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Pull out me a new fresh piece of paper now. So, we're just gonna go ahead and get started here. Take a decent, about like an inch and a half in radius this. Start over here, just draw a circle. I'm gonna draw the Visca Pisces and start the seed of life. That is one circle in the center with six circles surrounding it. Like so. Now, this is where we're gonna need our rulers and our other writing utensils. Let me grab my other pen here. Eight, so you can see it's nice and easy. So, we are going to create a hexagon using the seed of life. Now you can do this in the center one, or you can do this on the outer edge, but I'm just gonna do it in the center one because that's how I've done it all the time. So we're just going to connect these petals to one another. It gives you a perfect hexagon. Now the hexagon, when it comes to nature, is the ideal shape for space conservation. You know, like honeycombs with bees, they are a hexagon shape because hexagons stack remarkably well. You can fit a, a ton of ton of them in a very small space. Like you can't, you have like empty space if you're trying to like put circles, you know, next to one another. And then squares aren't very stable, but a hexagon, when it's bunched up with a whole bunch of other ones, is extremely strong. And we're connecting the ends of these petals to one another. Doing here giving us a hexagonal shape. So now we're gonna turn this into a cube now. How we do that is we take the center and bring it down to the edge. Actually, I'll do it this way. We're gonna take the center and connect it to this pedal out here. So that wasn't very clear, but and then we're going to connect these two petals the rest of the way. And this gives us the first platonic solid, the cube. Just like that. Let me get my colored marker here so you guys can see it better. One square. Like a three dimensional cube. It's the most efficient way to create a three dimensional cube, really quick. I guess there could be fat. There you go. Boom. The first platonic shape. Cube. Right. The next one is the octahedron. Here we go. We're going to do this over here now. Again, we're going to do another seat of life. Start with the Visca Pisces. From that, create the seed of life. You have to use a little bit of your imagination when it comes to viewing some of these shapes in 3D. Uh, I'm thinking about doing. I'll figure out how to make a whole bunch of 3D models of all of the shapes and then do another video or live stream making all those for you guys. That would be pretty cool. So, there you go, Seed of Life. Now, from here, we're going to we have this point out here. 
we're going to connect this point to this point out here. Okay, so let me grab my other marker. All right, so we're gonna take one, two, and three, and connect one to three, right? Yeah. So here we go. One, skipping two, going to three. That, and then we're gonna go three, six. So if this is one, two, three, four, excuse me, three to five. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna go three to five now. And this gives us an equilateral triangle. Then we go five to seven, or well, I guess back to one. And now we have an equilateral triangle. That last thing to do now is to go from one to two and two to three. So imagine this, you're imagine like you're viewing a diamond at a, at a shallow angle. And the idea is this. I had a 3D model of it, it way more sense. Now we're going to connect three to four, four to five. 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 Then six back to one. That is our octahedron. So let me draw this out here so you can see it better. So if you imagine, imagine this section is like the Great Pyramid. And then there's another pyramid underneath it making a diamond shape and you're looking at it at this angle so if you imagine actually let me go grab my other pyramid to try to better illustrate this this is with the great pyramid so it's not the correct dimensions but it's kind of like this right but you're viewing it at like that kind of an angle or something like that right that's what that is so next one we're going to do the te tetrahedron Pull this dude over here, some. Again, just like all the rest, we're gonna start with Scopices. And then from that, the seed of life. I'll tell you, when you've been doing this for a few hours, you, you get better at it. Make nearly as many mistakes. I should probably actually talk. Uh, that's an H. E. All right. Now we have our third seed of life. So again, very similar to this one up here. We're going to create an equilateral triangle. Going so if we call this one one, two, three, four. Five and six. We're gonna go one to three. No. Back up here to five. Down one. Equilateral triangle. Now that we're, now what we're gonna do is just connect those three points to the very center of it. This just gives us 3D pyramid shape. Very simple. Probably the easiest one to do. That and the cube. The cube's in that. Boom. 
Etrahedon. Etra. Etrahedon. Yeah. All right, let me get my other color here. Purple. Uh, very cool. All right. Now the last one of the Sonic Solids we're going to do. Fifth one. The, what is it called? The deco, Dodecahedron. That one's a little bit too, that one's a little bit more complicated. But I'll show you what it looks like though. So, rough on my, there we go. Again, the Scopices. Crap. Well, I meant to draw this out. Petra. Petra. That's an H. I don't know why I keep making that a freaking B. There we go. Sorry, I had to double check myself. All right. Another Visca Pisces over here. Excuse my horrible spelling. Need of life. This is the more complicated one out of the four we're going to be doing. Very good. All right, so now we're going to be we're going to be connecting the ends to each one. So if we got one, two, three, five, six, we're going to connect them all around it. Icosahedron. Three, three to four. Four to five. Five to six. I have a hexagon shape. Now, from here, we're going to go from 1 to 5. Then we're going to go from 1 to 3. Basically making another equilateral triangle. In three to 5. So we should have a hexagon with a triangle in the center of that for now. Then we're going to create another triangle in the center of this dude. Going from the center of these two here. That is a little bit off. Learn. Go with it. All right, so. Uh, Nothing wrong here. I'll do nothing wrong. All right, so we have these points here. Two. Oh, well, we did do something. Nothing to Oh, I know I'm doing wrong. All right, so sorry. We're going to so come here from two to five. Make that line here. And we're gonna draw this line here in two, but we're gonna stop it right there on the edge of that triangle. That's what I was getting wrong, my bad. Same thing from here to six, we're gonna connect it to three, but we're gonna stop that line short on that triangle. Then last time from four to one, but stopping short. Can I say guys, I'm a newbie. There we go. Then we're going to connect all those points together, creating a triangle here in the center of this.
I knew what I was doing. Don't you give me crap? Yay, I did not screw up. Here we go. The Ikasoa Hedron. Ikasoa, something like that. Draw this in green for you so you can see it better. Whole bunch of triangles. That dude is. we go and those are the four basic platonic shapes now we're missing one the dodecahedron let me show you this guy we're not gonna be doing this one today that the dodecahedron that's probably my favorite one looks dope looks cool very cool all right so we've come to the final task everybody let's make a three-dimensional great pyramid Move all this out of the way. Now this is the pattern we're going to be creating right here. This is what it looks like. So we're going to be making a Visca Pisces, and then from that we're going to find the dimensions of the Great Pyramid. Then because this is a 2D image of the Great Pyramid, we're going to have to extend that triangle out just a little bit to create the 3D, and then from that make the rest of the sides, make the base, cut it out, fold it together, and then we're ready to go. So let's do it. Here. First thing to do, take your ruler, and we're going to draw a construction line. And I'm going to put this dude not directly in the center of the page. I'm going to pull this dude down just a little bit because we're going to be using the space up here. And we're going to draw a line. And I'm just going to do this in pencil, this part in ink. A line, construction line. All right, so now I'm going to take my caliper, or excuse me, my compass, set my first circle's diameter. A little bit bigger, so I'm gonna make it about, about uh, two inches in radius, so four inch diameter circle. And we're not gonna do this in the center of the page, I'm gonna do it offset just a little bit over here. Then draw my first circle. So. And then from there, we're going to draw the di we're going to take the diameter of that circle. So come out here to the end, dial your compass out to that diameter, and then draw a circle from that. So, and then do the same thing over here on this side. I'm creating a Visca Pisces with a circle at the center of that. And now that we've done that, we have created these two points here to find the very center of that circle. So I'm going to take my ruler, find those intersections, draw a line, and I want my line to extend further out the top out here. I'm just going to do this in pencil again. There's no reason to do this. That. Now, we're going to put our compass with the diameter of the big circles, center point right there. Make sure I still have my diameter here. Come here. That's how you check it. All right, put that dude at the center there. Draw another circle. So, now we have created this intersection down here. We're going to find this distance. So we're going to call this right here 1. Okay, we're going to take one and connect it to this intersection right here. Put my needle on one, send my compass out, that, okay, so here to here, leaving my needle here on one, starting down here. We're going to draw this circle out this way and we're going to stop at that line right there okay that's our stopping point so we get this line coming out here 
So now what this is doing, we're going to take our original diameter again. So come back here, find this circle. Then where this intersects with that line, needle there. And then we're going to draw a half circle. And what this does, this is how we find the golden ratio. So, wrong pencil. This intersects here. So if this is 1, this is 2. This point right here that we made is 1 plus square root of 5. Or 2 and the golden, the golden ratio. 2, two phi. Call it. So, and, and to find that, we don't really have to find this, but find that intersect right there oh where the pencil go draw that there so this is one and this is five so, so that's not necessary right now we don't really have to know that so now what we're going to do we're almost there we're going to take our golden ratio which is one plus uh, the square root of five or two phi so we're going to put our needle out here and we're going to line it up with the very center of this circle here. Send this dude out. Fill that in there. Okay. Now we have the golden ratio. That's what we have here. So we're going to put our needle on two. And we're going to make a mark up here. Cross that line. Right there. Now it intersects right there. So now we can create the Great Pyramid. Take my ruler, going from that point we just made to, and this is also over here as well. I'm going to extend these out this way. And man, I hope I did not make this too big. If I made this too big, I'm going to be super upset with myself. Might have to do it again. First angle. Totally did make this. Well, foo. Might just do it again if any of you are lagging behind. Smaller. I don't know. We'll see. Might, might fit. There we go. I'm going to do the base as well. That is how you draw a 2D image of the Great Pyramid in all of its amazing sacred geometry dimension. 2D image. Now, this isn't going to work to make it a three-dimensional shape, though. We have to extend this triangle out to where, when we fold it together, it'll still be this geometry when you're looking at it at the side. Now we're going to do that is we're going to take our golden ratio again. It should still be the same. Looking at here, okay? We're going to go at the base of the Great Pyramid, right here, and then we're going to come up here and make a line. Oop. That cross intersection right there. Cool. Now, this is where I'm going to need my bigger ruler. We are going to connect that point down here to the corners of the Great Pyramid. So, man, I hope I did not make this too big. We're about to find out, though. So those are our dimensions right there. So if this is the Great Pyramid, then this is going to be as a Great Pyramid in the scale we need to That's going to be one side, that blue, one side of the Great Pyramid. So now we're going to make a circle surrounding this dude. And this is where I'm going to see if I've made this too big or not. So, take distance here to the peak of that triangle. Okay, so I'm going from two peak here. Or, that is also... Uh, there to there, and we're going to take our needle, put it at the peak of this guy here, and draw a circle around that. Oh, uh, see that went off the page. Oh no. I might be able to get away with this though. 
we shall see. Now we have this circle. As you can see, I'm off my page over here. Crap, made it just a little bit too big. A little bit too big. You know what? I don't know if this is going to work now. Let me, let me find out real quick. So, find my face. Knew this was going to happen too. Knew I was going to screw. Yep. Way too big. My goodness. Okay. Well, I'm going to race through this to draw another one for you guys because this is unacceptable. I can't I can't screw up like this. So if you if you weren't following along, this is where you get a second chance. Let's just put it that way. So new piece of paper over here. Have one? Nope, we gotta tear it out. New piece of paper. Sorry guys, this sucks. If you're just now, you know, if you're watching this later on, then just sorry I put you through all that. I'll probably put like something disclaimer in there. Like, yo, I screwed up. Oh well. What are you gonna do? I know you guys want a three-dimensional image of the Great Pyramid, so let's not let's not screw up this time. All right, back to square one. Aren't you excited? All right, we're gonna draw construction line. Not towards the directly center of the page, a little bit lower than that. Maybe this a little, way lower than that. This time. Construction line. Very cool. So I'm gonna make sure I don't do the same diameter here this time. So I'm gonna find this point here. Come in about that much. That should give me that was really technically mad, but alright, so make our circle. Find the diameter of that circle. Create our Vesica Pisces. Okay. Now we have that intersect right there. So I'm going to take my ruler. Fine. I don't want to do that one. Good. Now using that original diameter we had, intersect that right there at the center. Draw another circle. Okay, so now we have that point back here to number one. Remember we call this one one? Okay, and this this point right here, let me just mark right there. Yeah. That mark. Wow, this is super low. Here we go. Bring this back up. My bad guys. All right. We're going to find distance from 1 to that point. Copy video. Super, super copy. All right. Draw this out like so. And that gives us the golden ratio. Remember that? Okay. Now we're going to find the original diameter. The first circle. Come out here to that intersect right there. There, draw a half circle. That gives us this intersect phi. That's phi. Okay. Then taking this distance here, which is two phi. I think I accidentally said that is the golden ratio. Two by distance. And we're going to go here on two. Remember, two right here. Mark right there. Line up here at the top. That's our. That's the peak of the Great Pyramid. Take my ruler. Connect that intersect up there to two. Creating the first side of the Great Pyramid. From here down to this edge of this circle. Giving us Great Pyramid. So I'll do the big. I'm not going to draw it in color. You guys don't need to. You guys know I'm. All 
right? Very good. Now we still have the two pi measurement on our compass. We're gonna put the needle on two. No, excuse me, I'm sorry. We're gonna put the needle at the base of the pyramid right here. Make a mark up here. That's the intersecting point. That will be dimensions we the model. That to the corners of the Great Pyramid. Like so. Yeah, this is gonna fit this time. I can see it now. Very good. So now we're going to take that distance here from two to that peak. We should still have that on our caliper. No, wait, no, we don't. Gotta get out there. That distance. Alright, so I have that from two to that peak there. Putting my needle now on that peak and drawing a circle. Oh, much more better. Look at that. Fits the page. Who would have thought? All right. So now, from here, we have to create the points for the other corners of the other triangle. So we're going to find our base. Is that out of focus? That is super freaking out of focus, isn't it? My goodness. Focus. It looks out of focus on my screen. I hope it's not out of focus for you guys. If it is, I'm super freaking sorry. This webcam sucks. Man, I need a new webcam. All right, anyway, we're going to find the base of the pyramid. Our calipers here. These calipers, man. Talk, talk about my job. No, compass. The compass. All right, so leaving it here on two, we're going to come out here and make a line on the edge of that circle right there. See that? Okay. Bring this dude out here. Do the same thing over here. That intersects, okay. And now put our needle on that marking mark we made over here. Then draw another line up here. That intersect right there, okay. Last one over here. And that's what we have right there. It's trying to be in focus, I can see it struggling. All right, so now, we're going to go from the center point out to each of those markings we just made. All right, so I take my ruler, draw a line. So, take these points. So, what we're going to have, we're going to have five sides of the Great Pyramid because one is going to fold underneath the other. That'll be more stable. Yeah, so we have one, two, three, four, five triangles. We're going to put, we're going to make one fold underneath the rest. Or I, actually, no, it's going to be five probably. It folds underneath four. We'll see what we get there. This is going to go away. We're going to, we're going to cut that out. Not keep that so let's make the base now on each triangle so we're going to connect the bases together so and these are this is where we're going to be folding these marks right here and i'm going to show you the most efficient way to fold paper you will never never fold paper another way you have to have a root dilemma very good so those are the surface sides of the great pyramid and it's gonna make more sense when we finally get to cut that out but we have to make the base we have to make the underside right because there's a bottom okay there's a bottom to that dude so we're gonna come over here on our triangle two is what i have that labeled as okay and with the same same distance as the base, I had like we had before. We're gonna start here on two. Pull us over here. And we're just gonna make a little crescent out here. 
So, see that? Okay, and then we're going to do that over here. Corner as well. Like so. Now, if you have a square, which looks like this, this might, it might make this part a little bit easier, but I'll show you how to do it with just a So you want to put a square up against the bottom of this triangle here and draw the line out and stop where we made that mark. If you don't have a square, because I didn't tell you guys to bring a square, if you just have a ruler, you can use it like a square. See that corner right there? We're just going to line that dude up, this corner with that corner on the what we drew. Line this surface up right here with that line. We're going to draw this out where we made that mark out here. That. Okay, do the same thing on this side down here. Way, sorry. Okay, that, that's the beginning of our square. Then we're going to connect those two points together. That is going to be the bottom of our square, but we need to make little flaps out here. When we fold it together, it'll stay together. So we're going to find the very center of the square by connecting these four corners together. Hey, would you look at that? This is almost a perfect six inch cross square. Whatever that measure is. I don't know what I'll tell my. So now, that is the center of our square. Done with that right now. So we're going to come back to our compass and we're going to find the distance from the center out to this edge with our compass. Put this dude right here, dial this down. center point okay then we're going to place our needle at the center we're going to start here on this corner and go all the way around and stop on that corner yeah and these are going to be flaps that we fold inward that's what these marks are out here too we're going to keep this stay on and stuff this is going to be flaps to fold in so boom that is the pattern to create a three-dimensional model of the Great Pyramid. So now I'm going to cut this dude out. This is where the scissors come in. If you don't have scissors, what rock do you live under? Okay, so I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way now. So you can see what's going on better. All right, so I'm just gonna basically do a rough cut out of all this first. I'm trying to be precise right now. Doesn't matter if you go through all this, we don't care about none of that. Okay, throw that away, don't need that. All right, so now we're going to cut all this white part out, okay? But we're not gonna cut over our flaps. You need those flaps. So I'm gonna start up here. And this is just gonna be a circle. Closer you guys. Okay, don't don't cut into your foundation. Okay, and then this is a hard angle right here. Remember, don't cut this guy out. Need that in here. Keep that flat too. Okay, so cutting out this circle we made, and these don't have to be precise because these are going to be folding inward. Don't don't be like paranoid about. It cutting a little bit too much into those flaps because you're not going to see them. All right, that's what we should have right now. Throw this away. 
So now we got to cut this triangle out right here. We don't need this. Where the fold is basically going to be. Cut it out. Oh. Comes out like that. So this is going to be, that's the template for it. Right there. Very cool. So now let me show you how to fold this. The best way to do this is to take your ruler. Okay. If you don't have a ruler like this, uh, good luck because this is the best way to do this, but it's, it's super easy. So this is going to be the inside of the pyramid so that when we're done, it's this nice clean look, right? So this side is going to be the outside. Okay. So. I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna fold inward, just right up against that line like that, and then score, fold, and then crease it, like that. And I'm gonna do that to all of these lines, okay? There, get underneath it, crease, that, all of these flaps we made. Base. So be careful with these corners here. You want to get that as close as you can. It, it can screw up right there if you're not careful. All the flaps. Now, I bet you guys are wondering, wait a minute, the Great Pyramid has eight sides. Well, how are you gonna make a Great Pyramid with eight sides? Well, that's a little bit more complicated when it comes to this folding part. We're not gonna do it here, but basically what I would do, I can, you can see here on this model, I basically did another fold inward at the center of each triangle. Make that, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna make the basic clean, clean pyramid. Because I'm honestly, I don't like the way it looks. It doesn't fold right. So that was just kind of an experiment to see if it looked good and it doesn't, doesn't like it. All right, so now we're gonna be folding these triangles inward on each other, okay? So again, a ruler, put it out here. That dude. This is where it gets a little bit trickier because all your, all your sides are gonna be like in your way. And you're like, get out of the way. Put that in. This is where it's tricky. So I like to fold this guy in all the way. Up. Fold this dude in all the way and that gets him out of the way. That. Triangle. So now the next thing you'll need is some kind of tape, which I totally Got grab for myself, but I will go without. So we're gonna fold these dudes in all the way the outside here. Okay, and we are going to put four underneath five, like so. That I'll do it again for you. You have this putting four over top of five or basically five over top of four. Now we have that. And what I did before on these dudes, I had hot glue and I, oops. I put hot glue on this leaf right here underneath five to where when I press it up against that leaf on four, it held that. And then I just folded these guys in and glued them to the insides to where these guys all stay on the inside like that, right? Okay, that makes sense. So then I did the same thing. I put glue on the outsides of these leaves. Oh crap, we got one more fold to make. I'm stupid. We gotta do this fold right here. I was like, why is this not folding right? Okay, sorry, my bad, my bad. Pull this back out. One more triangle, here we go. There we go. 
All right, now, now back to it. Four or five over top of four and pull these dudes in. And then you guys have a three dimensional, come on, great pyramid of Giza. Look at that. Very, very cool. That's how you do it. Now, I don't have a way to glue this together, but you guys get the idea. Very cool. All right, so I'm going to put my webcam back over here now so I can come into the chat and talk and see what you guys are talking about. So I will be right back.
Guys. I wish I read that earlier. I feel so stupid now. Man, how long have we been going without me, without the mic? Wow. Well, I feel so unbelievably stupid right now. Here I am just talking to myself. Going through all your guys' comments and I'm not saying anything. Well, I'm back now. Hey, everybody. What's good? Okay, so just to go over a few of the things I was talking about. Man, how long was I talking for? At least 20, like 15 minutes. I feel so stupid now. Where did I learn all this from? Uh, one of you guys asked. I forget who. I'm not going to try to go find it again. I learned all of that from SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded. I don't know what I'm going to do about that when it comes to posting this online. I guess I'm going to have to like download it and edit all of that garbage out because that was embarrassing. I am so sorry, guys. Man. And there's 20 of you in here staring at me just talking and nothing's happening. Beautiful. So beautiful. Okay, well, almost 10 minutes. Oh, so horrible. That is, that is brutal. That is so brutal. I am so sorry, guys. That's why it jumped down. Ah, oh, man. Well, thank you guys for um, pointing that out and me just being so remarkably incompetent that I did not notice that beforehand. Uh, see, I muted the mic so you guys wouldn't hear nothing as I like scrim rummaged around. How long was that muted for is the question. I don't, oh, you said about 10 minutes. That's right, my bad, okay. I'm going to come back in here to the comments, and now that you can hear me, we're going to talk a little bit more. Um, how, how did, uh, Justin Osborne says, how did it come up in conversation? Hey, want to drew some circles and make a great pyramid. You're talking about, you know, who started doing this. Uh, we don't know who started doing it, but it started a really, really long time ago. And I think that this is some of the oldest knowledge on the planet quite literally. And I think that this, that sacred geometry is a way to encode knowledge and information in a way that people thousands of years from now would be able to understand when languages change, when history is changed and rewritten, this kind of stuff will be preserved as long as people know how to do it basically. And from just the basics of doing the sacred geometry, of shapes and all this kind of stuff unlocks secrets about the universe. For example, the golden ratio, which is literally in everything. Super cool stuff. So I'm going to come back up here. Um, you guys were talking about the sarcophagi. About it releasing demons because it's 2020 and we should not open them because demons, demons are everywhere. No, I'm not superstitious like that. So now interesting thing though about the cursed tombs that one of the ideas, or I think I actually think this was proven, is that when you have a body that just sits there for thousands of years, decomposing and doing all that kind of stuff, a whole bunch of mold grows on the fabric and on the mummy itself. So when you have a bunch of dudes open up a tomb and then open up the coffin, all of those spores get released up in the air from that mold that's been growing for thousands of years. And all those dudes in that super tight space inhale all of it. So everybody who stepped in that tomb when they opened it up died later on. So it became this superstitious thing of the people who went into the tomb died. It's the curse of the tomb. Ooh. That's kind of where the idea of the uh, cursed tomb came from. Um, Back down in here. Uh, a lot of people laughing at me. Yep. Want to know who sat around trying to figure all this stuff out? Super, super old, smart people. That's what it is. Here you are. Everybody's screaming at me. Start over from when you brought the camera back. All the way back? Got 18 people in here. I mean, I can go all the way back. What do you guys think? Should I go all the way back? I'll wait. I'll wait to see if I... What are you talking about? Uh, where did I go now? Yeah, you guys sending me, like, I 
I'm looking down here at my iPad. I have my iPad running as well. And I like scroll down and it's like, oh no. <laughs> There's so many people will be like, your audio is all screwed up. And Rob Weeks, I'm supposed to be doing my psychology work right now. So I hope he unmutes soon or I'll actually have to get back to it. Oh, well. Well, you should probably be doing your homework. This is being recorded, so you could, you know, watch it later. But hey, psychology, you got to figure out what's going on in the human brain, right? I think he said something about ordering pizza. <laughs> no, I did not say anything about ordering pizza. DJ Miloski, what kind of pizza? No, there's no pizza. There's no pizza. wonder how upset he's going to be. Super, super upset. I said a lot of things. I don't remember exactly what I spoke about. Let me see. There's still no audio? No, that, you guys can hear me. Why is this guy saying no audio? I don't know. Kyle, what are you saying? Downey? Dude, I'm not muted. There's still no audio? No, I got audio. What are you guys talking about? Trying to lip read? Oh, good luck with that. Um... Everybody's still laughing at me. Just living life. Yep. Wow, I hadn't considered that, nor had I heard that before. It makes perfect sense. Talk about the, uh, the spores, the mold spores. Mm-hmm. 100%. Uh, yep, enjoying the present. Enjoying the present what? Just living life? What are you guys talking amongst, amongst each other? Oh, now you hear me. Well, guys, I'm just going to come back up here to the top and see if I can find some questions that I was talking about earlier when I was muted. I will be sure never to do that again. Um, so Rob Long, I mentioned about how they should live stream the, uh, you know, if, if they have a discovery and they, they find something in like an ancient place. Rob Long says, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, you shut up. Uh, an edited version would be would summarize everything after the fact. But why edit the find? The academics want to make sure everything lines up with their world view before it gets out. Yeah, and hide some things away if they don't want it to get out, 100%. Thomas Panko, Panko says, In your opinion, how old do you believe some of these old stone works actually are? For an example, perfectly carved stone. Then on top of that, stone obviously different stone. Um, I definitely believe that the Sphinx, man, I need to mute this real quick. I don't know why this keeps going. Oh, this is all you guys screaming at me from messengers and whatnot. Shut up. Um, the Sphinx, I 100% believe is at least 12,000 years old. Okay. Obviously there's people that say it's completely nuts and crazy, but I'm on that side. Uh, I think a lot of the stonework in South America, like the polygonal stone masonry, anytime this is how I think I, I, you make the connection. If we have polygonal stone masonry in Egypt and polygonal stone masonry in South America, the same people, I believe, were building those, those structures. So I think that stuff to be way older, back when the planet was a global connected civilization. So I would say before the cataclysmic event of 12,000 years ago. And then obviously you have the really fine, perfectly cut stone on the bottom and then all the lesser quality stone on top. And that's just evidence of cultures building on top of the far older ancient ruins. So the oldest stuff, I think, goes back 12,000 years ago. Now, there's this site, I think it's in New Zealand. Not positive. I'll have to go back and find it. But it's this stone wall that they say is natural. And they have to say it's natural because the area in which this stone is found dates to like 300,000 years old or some, some extreme super old number. So it's not possible, basically, from according to their narrative, that humans were able to build this wall. But when you're sitting there staring at it, my gosh, does it look like a bunch of the stonework we find in Egypt. Let me tell you. Like where the stones are like perfectly you know spaced to one another we can't fit anything in between them they just say it's a naturally a natural break in the stone but it doesn't look like a natural break to me 
Moshi would love more discussion on the Sudan pyramids that were blown up. Yes, so there are pyramids. We didn't know they were pyramids for the longest time, but come to find out they're pyramids and it's like something just blew them over or they exploded from the inside out. Unfortunately, a lot of it is just speculation, but that would be a, that would definitely be a good video to do. Uh, it is located at Abydos to the rear of the Temple of Seti. Don't know what you're talking about there. Rot weeks, my bad. Okay, the Fibonacci sequel, Justin Osborne, is the math, is this math they used in carving, in, excuse me, is this math they used in carving the perfect faces on the statues in Egypt you're talking about at Luxor? Was that Luxor? Yeah, it's in Luxor. 100%. Anytime you see like the circles, basically mathematical equations with circles, that is sacred geometry, 100%. And for them to be able to do it in 3D the way they were able to do it is pretty insane. Excuse me, guys. Like, it's getting warm down here. I need to turn on, like, the AC again. I had turned it off because it wasn't that hot outside. But it's getting warm now, and I'm sweating a little bit. And when you don't have hair, guys, let me tell you, it just runs right down the front of your face. Horrible. Um, you have two skip points. I don't know what you're talking about there. One in 20, Andy. Um, Rob Weeks, I just want to know... How many demons have been summoned accidentally thanks to sarcophagi? Yeah, well, I already mentioned that earlier. Let's just say millions, endless, because this world is crazy. And every time something like that happens, something bad happens. So we can just attribute it, that to opening up the bot, the sarcophagi. Let's just say that. How about that? Where did you learn this? That's what, uh, where I learned this from Sacred Geometry Decoded. He's got really good videos of him doing all this kind of stuff. And honestly, if you just type into YouTube, how to draw sacred geometry, this, or like, you know, there's a lot of videos of people doing it and whatnot. You're not going to die today. No, sir, Downey D. I'm at work, so it's not like I'm having anything better to do. Well, you're at work, bro. Depends on your work. I mean, if you're supposed to be doing something, then what are you doing watching me? You can always come back and watch this and just watch, you know, 10 minutes of zero audio and me just talking into nothing. Um, like, what were they doing? How did it come up in conversation? Hey, want to draw some circles and make a pyramid? I don't know. Was it as simple as people just starting to draw circles and then making it up? Or does it come from a much deeper, more ancient thing? I mean, guys, sacred geometry is literally encoded into your DNA. It's in how galaxies spiral. It's in nature. It's in everything. Maybe somebody didn't make it up. Maybe they discovered it. I don't know. And that's where the audio problem takes, takes place. Let me scroll down here to where you guys are no longer... Giving me crap about my audio. No worries. Ha ha ha. Yep. Ash, 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 raff. Yeah, laugh it up. Everybody laugh it up. I want to hear it. I can't hear it though, so. Oh well. Your embarrassed face was worth it. Well, I am glad. Um, What's up, Gregory? How are you? Yeah, what's up, Gregory? Where's Gregory? I was not ordering pizza. Okay. Justin Osborne, do you talk about how they used the geometry for the faces on the statues? Yep, I answered that. Mm -hmm. There's audio. Ask the question, should we go back and their no was for adjusting the angle. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Can we not super chat? I don't have that set up. I don't know how to set that up. I am... I am winging a lot of this, guys, if you could not tell. I I don't have any way of doing that kind of stuff. Or I, I'll, I can definitely figure it out, but I don't know. I haven't really cared to do that kind of stuff. I'm not going to lie. I just kind of like sharing the knowledge and just going with it. But who knows? We'll see. We'll see. If I get back on TikTok, I might actually start to try to monetize and do that kind of stuff. Because if I get back on, I will probably be there to stay until something bad happens. And then I'm just like, screw this and I'll throw it away. Now, cool news, guys. There is a new app out there that is basically a carbon copy of TikTok called News Clapper. Let me type this out. News Clapper. 
look this up. Some guys from there contacted me and they want me to start making videos on their app. And I have a blue check mark next to my name on there. Same as before, Phantom Universe with an underscore. I'll just type it out for you guys just in case. Okay, at Phantom Universe, just like everything else. And I'll be posting on there. Now, the one problem I have with it is that there's a way to like splice the video like in TikTok, but there's no way to add any photos right now. And I'm hoping that that's something that will be coming in the future, but I will be posting on there. And then if this t TikTok thing, you know, I'm okay with it, then I might jump back onto TikTok and we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Connected like Pangea. No, if we're talking... We're not talking like all of the co the continents being connected with Pangea. That was like, I think it's like 2 million years ago. Like, that was a long time ago. I want to say it was like 2 million years ago. Might have been 22 million years ago. I'm not positive off the top of my head. No, I'm talking like, like we are today. Humans were able to traverse the globe, whether it be by air or by sea, I don't know. But if we find this over here and then the exact same thing on the other opposite side of the planet, that I think is a connection on those cultures were in contact with one another at some point in history. So that's what I mean by that. Not when the con continents were all in one big landmass. Explain why pi is found in all the measurements. 100%. You're doing great. Well, gee, thanks, bro. Good stuff. Well, my guys, I am probably going to end it right there. That was rough, man. I had to redraw my pyramid and I was muted for 10 minutes. So, oh well. But I appreciate all you guys for hanging out with me. Quick shout out to my sponsor though, guys. Um, they really helped me out with a lot of stuff, but it is the water machine. Let me find the link for it for you guys. You don't have to get it if you don't want to, but if you use the promo code RIVUS, R-I-V-U-S, you will get 10% off. And I've had a funny story. Oh my gosh, funny story. So earlier, before setting up to do all this kind of stuff, I filled up my water machine, poured all the water in the top and, um, you know, filled up my jug and then came out here and started, you know, doing my video stuff. Well, apparently after filling up my jug and after filling up the water machine, I didn't close the valve where you, you know, pull, take the water out. So the entire, like a few hours of me sitting in here, setting up all this stuff, my water machine is just leaking out onto the floor. Like literally like five minutes, I like my brother comes in the room. He's like, why is there water everywhere? And I'm like, I'm about to go live. He's like, I have got to clean this up now. And I'm like, yes, cause I, I cannot. So I appreciate it, bro. So yeah, so this is the water machine. Check it out. Appreciate anything you guys can do. That is one way you guys can support me. But I totally understand. And, it, and it, water, it's great. I've had it for a few months now. And I don't drink water out of anything else. I have my canteen right here. This dude. That's where I get all my water from. Right there. So we will see if there's any other way for me to set up a way to make some money off this kind of stuff. Because who knows. Um, but I'm going to leave it right there, guys. I appreciate all you guys. It's, you're doing great. Why, well, thank you guys. All right, I'm gonna head out. You guys have a good night and I will see you guys later. Bye.